Hey everybody, uh, Paul Lake here with another physics problem solved. I got this one from uh, several of my uh, tutoring clients who wanted me to solve this problem, so I thought I might make it a, a video and share it with all of you. Uh, if you need a physics tutor, check the uh, video description. There's a link uh, that will uh, get you in touch with me. And um, so, uh, today's problem, let's get to it. Uh, so, uh, we've got uh, an airplane, and it accelerates uniformly from rest, okay? Uh, a physicist uh, passenger holds up a thin string of negligible mass uh, to which she has uh, tied her ring and notices that the string makes an angle with the vertical. Uh, if the plane reaches a takeoff speed of 65 meters per second after accelerating for a total of 30 seconds, determine the angle theta that the string makes with the vertical uh, during the acceleration of the plane before it leaves the ground. Okay, so uh, what do you need uh, to know to solve this problem? Well, you need to be familiar with the kinematic equations for constant acceleration and uh, how to use Newton's second law in conjunction with free body diagrams. So if this is totally unfamiliar, to you, you might want to study it before you give this a shot. But I do encourage all of you uh, watching this video, try this problem yourself before watching the rest of this video. And um, and then you can uh, check your work with mine. All right, so let's get started. Um, what is given in this problem? Let's draw a little sketch. We don't really need to draw the airplane. The airplane is what's called a, a an accelerating reference frame. So the passenger is in this reference frame that's accelerating. And what she sees is this. Uh, she's holding a string. And the string is uh, holding a ring. Well, we're going to assume that the mass of the ring is what matters. The mass of the string doesn't really um, amount to much. And because we're accelerating to the right, we'll say the airplane is accelerating to the right, the, um, the ring is, is, is off at an angle from the vertical like this. Now, I encourage you to try this. Uh, take a, a ring or some mass and with a light string and hold it in a car. Now, don't you be the driver. <laughs> Somebody else should drive. But just watch it as you accelerate forward or accelerate back or even accelerate to the side by going around a turn. And you will see that uh, as you accelerate, the, uh, the mass on the string will um, deviate from the vertical with a certain angle. And if you know this angle, if you put a protractor here, you can even figure out what the uh, acceleration is. Okay, now they don't tell us what the acceleration is, but they do give us some kinematic information. First of all, it says the, the uh, airplane uh, accelerates uniformly from rest. So, oh, by the way, accelerates uniformly, that means A equals a constant. Now, that's important because if the acceleration is constant, that means I can use those kinematic equations, and we'll get to those in a minute. Um, and uh, so we know that we're starting from rest. So that means that the initial velocity, the velocity at time equals zero, is equal to zero. Okay, and then the final velocity, which I write like this, is 65 meters per second. And of course, that all took 30 seconds uh, to do. And, um, and so what we want to find, we want to find that angle theta. Okay. Now this is a problem that involves force. And so, um, and force and acceleration. So uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, go right to uh, a, a free body diagram of the object so that I can understand the outside forces that are acting on the object of interest. In this case, the object of interest, what is this ring? So I'm gonna draw a free body diagram of the ring. Here's the ring. And of course we have a string pulling up and to the right like this. So that's a tension force. I'll call that F sub T. Some books just write it as T. And then uh, of course this force is at an angle theta. Put theta right in there. Make 
just a little bigger. And of course, uh, gravity's pulling this thing down, right? So we've got gravity. So that, and, and those are the only two forces acting, is the tension on the string and the force of gravity pulling it down. And that's it. Uh, there's no normal force here. There's no force of friction or anything like that. Um, some people, um, I, I've seen one that put, well, what is the, what about the force of the airplane? Well, this ring doesn't know it's on an airplane. All it knows, <laughs> and it doesn't know anything. It's an inanimate object, but but it's only under the influence of the force of this string on it and of the force of the gravity field of Earth. And, and that's it. Now I'm going to make, since I know the acceleration is to the right, I'm going to say that that's my x direction. And of course, the vertical will be my y direction. And now I'm going to take this tension force and break it up into its components. Now this is tricky. So watch this very, very, very carefully. Uh, of course, the string is pulling us to the right with that. And then it's pulling us, uh, it's hold, you know, up on the um, on the ring. So these components, always draw components as dashed lines on your free body diagram. Now here's what's tricky about it. Look where that angle is located. The angle is here, not here. It's up here. Now, when we break up forces into their components, we have to decide, is it, are we going to deal with cosine or sine? And this for this vertical component, I'm going to say, well, it's the tension force, you know, this total tension force times the cosine of the angle. Cosine. Why? because this component is adjacent to the angle. Remember, we've made a right triangle out of this. Here's the tension force is, like the, is the hypotenuse. And then we have the horizontal component and the vertical component. But because our angle is measured from the vertical and not the horizontal, the role of cosine and sine get switched. So, um, if you're used to the the horizontal component always being, you know, the this times times the cosine of the angle, don't you need to stop thinking about it that way. You need to look at where the angle is in this triangle and then decide whether to use cosine or sine. Of course, this is the opposite leg. So this component is the hypotenuse, and this is the opposite leg, so we multiply it by the sine of the angle. Okay. And so now we're done with that. And, um, you know, we're looking for the angle, and, and there it is. It's in two, two places, so that's promising. Now, let's uh, apply Newton's uh, second law here. And the if I add up all the forces acting on the object in the x direction, that's the net force in the x direction. And, of course, the net force equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. And then I look and I say, well, there's only one force on my free body diagram that's in the x direction, and that is this component of the tension force. And that's Ft sine theta. Okay. And that's going to equal ma. Now, let's look at this equation and let it help us figure out what to do next. Okay. Do we know the tension force? No. Do we know the angle? Well, that's what I'm trying to find. Do I know the mass? No, it wasn't given. Do I know the acceleration? No. I mean, this looks like a dead end. I don't know anything. But uh, let's, let's go through these uh, one at a time. Let's figure out what the acceleration is. And this is very common in force problems where... They will give you kinematic information, and then you can use that kinematic information to solve for the acceleration, and then use it in this equation to solve for whatever unknown you, you have. So, um, so let's do that. Let's figure out what the acceleration is. Well, I have to figure out which kinematic equation to use. They told us that the uh, they told us in the problem that the, the, the it accelerates uniformly, so I can use the kinematic equations. Well, let's let me uh, write those out. Okay, there's four of them. V equals V naught plus 
a t. Okay, and final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Then I have my displacement is equal to my final velocity plus my initial velocity divided by two. This is the average velocity times time gives me my displacement. My displacement is also equal to my initial velocity times time. This is the displacement due to the fact that the object had initial velocity plus one half a t squared. And this is the displacement of the object because the object accelerated during the time interval. And then we have this equation. The final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus twice the acceleration times my displacement. Now, these all interact together. They're, they're all kind of telling the same story. But why, so why do we have four of them? Well, um, and this should be review for you, but, uh, but that's okay. It's good to review. Um, what's missing? Okay, if I look at this, hey, look, there's no displacement in this equation. And in this equation, there's no acceleration. And in the third equation on my list, there's no final velocity. And in this equation, there's no time. So if you have a kinematics problem that does not involve displacement, it's not given, and you're not trying to find it, this is the equation to use. And in fact, that's the situation I have. I'm given the initial velocity, the final velocity, and time. And I want to find the, I need to find the acceleration so I can put it in here. Well, this is the equation to use. This one, uh, you know, um, well, this one doesn't even have what I'm trying to find in, in it. I'm trying to find the acceleration, so I wouldn't use that. Um, this, uh, I'm given the final velocity, but this doesn't use it, so, you know. And then this, uh, I'm given time. Uh, time is not missing from this problem. So this is the equation to use, and that's kind of how I um, figure out which kinematic equation to use is the, is, is, uh, is the best approach. Okay. So, um, so let's figure out what the acceleration is. V equals V naught plus A T. Now let's solve for that acceleration. That's the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time, right? I just algebraically solved for all that. Now, this might look familiar to you. There's another way of figuring out acceleration. What's the definition of acceleration? It's delta V over delta T, right? The change in velocity over the change in time. Well, V minus V naught, that's a change in velocity. And this is the time interval. It's just that my initial time is zero. In this, the way I'm writing this down, that's what that little zero means, my velocity when time equals zero. And, uh, oh, well, that's zero. It's given to be zero. And so my acceleration is 65 meters per second. That's the final velocity minus the initial velocity it was given to be zero, and they, they told us in the problem, right, 30 seconds. So the time is 30 seconds. And when you plug that into a calculator, you should get 2.167. I'll carry a few extra significant figures here, um, more than I need. Uh, but here's my acceleration. So yay, I got this taken care of. Now, I need to figure out mass and tension force. Now, here's a hint. When you're doing physics problems like this, and they don't give you the mass, you can kind of assume that it's going to cancel out. So just don't panic. Just say, okay, I'm just going to assume it's going to cancel out. And, yeah, it will cancel out. Because let's... Uh, um, let's sum the forces in the y direction. That equals ma in the y direction, right? And um, this is Newton's second law, right? So you add up all the forces that are in the y direction. That'll be your net force in the y direction, and that equals mass times acceleration. Well, uh, look at your free body diagram. The free body diagram uh, determines how you write this equation out. So I've got ft cosine theta. 
And then minus, right, you've, you've still got the weight, minus mg equals, and then ask yourself, what is the acceleration in the y direction? Well, this thing is accelerating in the horizontal direction as this airplane is taking off. The airplane is not accelerating up or down, not yet. It's on the runway. So the acceleration in the y direction is zero. Yay. Okay, so that, that means I can put a zero right there. And this means, oh, I can solve for Ft and plug it in here. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to add mg to the other side and divide by cosine theta. So the tension force in that string is going to be equal to the weight divided by the cosine of the angle that you have right there. Cool. All right. So put that in there. And so I'll do that down here. We've got um, uh, Ft is the weight divided by the cosine of the angle times the sine of the angle, right, from here to here. This is Ft, and the sine of the angle, and that's going to be equal to Ma. Oh, look, this is cool. I've got M on both sides. So divide, divide both sides of your equation by M, and the mass does cancel out. Yay. All right. And so, and then here I've got a choice. So I've got G, and what is sine theta divided by cosine theta? Well, hopefully, you know that sine theta divided by cosine theta is tangent theta equals the acceleration. I think you know where, where it's coming next. We, we can say, okay, the, the tangent of the angle is equal to the ratio of the acceleration of the airplane divided by the acceleration due to gravity. And, um, well, I, I don't want this. I want, uh, I want, I want theta. And sorry about that. I forgot to silence my phone. All right. Uh, so the inverse tangent of that, well, that's A. Well, I know what A is, right? The A, that's 2.167 meters per second squared divided by G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. <coughs> now, when you do this, whenever you do <coughs> inverse tangent, make sure that these the, the numerator and the denominator, whatever that quantity is, they have the same units. The units have to cancel out. You cannot take a ratio that isn't um, uh, dimensionless when you're using inverse tangent. So that's a good way to check your work. Oh, good grief. I'm going to silence my phone here. I'm not going to start over, though, so sorry. All right. So now I can plug that in. And when you do, plug that into your calculator, you should get, well, what I got was 12.5 degrees. And that's my answer. Okay. So decent problem um, and I encourage you like I said before take a little mass on a, on a ni nice little thread or very light string and uh, you know w w while you're driving around or if you're on a train or an airplane um, uh, w w you know, watch it try to accelerate at a constant rate and you'll see that it will deflect out and it will stay there uh, it'll probably swing around a little bit it's hard to Hard to do it perfectly, but anyway, it's kind of cool. All right. Well, I hope you found this um, um, helpful. If you did, please uh, please like the video. And if you're a physics student, I encourage you to um, subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'm going to try to make a whole bunch more videos. And and um, look in the description for a link where I'm trying to organize all these videos into a uh, uh, a document that will help you uh, find what you're looking for. So, um, but anyway, um, hey, you all take care of yourselves and uh, may the net force be with you.